guys, it's Sasha and welcome to my YouTube channel, Sasha Gibbs, She's Type Wonderful, a channel aimed at increasing awareness about type 1 diabetes. I do this by showing you some of the things I do to manage life with such a chronic illness. I also talk about topics such as diet, mental health issues, and so many other topics. So if you are new here, welcome to my channel. Thank you for choosing this channel. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. Now I am continuing on with my series about the insulin pump. Last week, I talked about the pros and cons of um, using the insulin pump. And this week, I am going a little bit further. I'm actually going to show you how I connect the infusion set. And along with my pump, I also use a continuous glucose monitor or, or CGM device. So I'm also going to show you how I turn myself into the bionic woman. So <laughs> without further ado, let's get into it. So I actually, I prepared my hands already. I washed them so they're clean because before doing the connections, I wanted to show you up close what each piece, what each device looks like and explain it a little bit. And then I'll show you how I do the connections. So this is what the insulin pump looks like. And in here is where I put my, it's called a reservoir. This is where the reservoir goes that actually has the insulin. And if you look inside, you'll see something that's kind of pushing out. And that is, that is what's called the piston. And that's actually what is wound each time and pushes the insulin up through the, um, the infusion set. So this is the pump. It has buttons. It's, it's pretty simple and um, easy to navigate. So that's the pump. So this is what the infusion set looks like. This is a tubing that carries insulin away from the pump to your body. And then this piece here, it has a needle. This is the reservoir connector. You actually put this into the reservoir and the reservoir is what holds the insulin. On the other end, it also has a needle and this is the part that you use to attach the set to your body. The insertion, the insertion needle places a small cannula inside your body and once you remove it, it leaves the cannula behind and there is a small adhesive that sticks it to your body. So this is what the infusion set looks like. This, this is the reservoir and this is what holds the insulin. And then, so this part I would connect to here after I remove the needle and that is what I then place inside the pump but I'll show you that when I'm ready to to make the connection so that is that for the infusion that's what it looks like this is the infusion set and then this is the reservoir these two go together these have to be actually changed every three days and then this is another, this is a con that I didn't mention in my previous video, is that all, when you have the pump, all these, the infusion set, the reservoir, these have to be purchased. So once you start using the pump, you have to purchase these devices all the time because these, this has to be replaced every three days. So this would be, this would be the con that I did mention in my previous video, that the pump comes with all these attachments that you have to purchase because you can only use them for a certain amount of time, you know, because you're attaching it to your body for um, to prevent infection and things like that, you have to change it within within the, the time frame. And for this, it's um, every three days. So I use a continuous glucose monitor or CGM device along with my insulin pump. And with that, I can see what my blood sugar levels are. I can see 
if it's increasing, if it's decreasing, I can also see how fast it is doing that. So it provides a visual as to what my blood sugar levels are. It consists of, this is what the transmitter actually looks like. And then this is what the sensor looks like. And this is what I insert. And with this, I actually have to change this every seven days. Again, goes back to what I was saying before, that these, the, the things that go along with the pump, they, you have to consistently buy them because they only last for a certain amount of time and you have to then change it to prevent infections and to make sure that they are working properly. You have to make that change. So this is the transmitter, the CGM transmitter, and then this is the sensor that I insert every seven days. So when you use a CGM device, you don't have to prick your finger all the time because you have the, the blood sugar reading is provided on your insulin pump. The difference is that the CGM, it only, it calculates your blood sugar based on the interstitial fluid. It doesn't actually get it from your, from your actual blood. So there may actually be a difference between the reading from this versus what your actual blood sugar is. It, it's not really, it doesn't, it shouldn't vary too much, but I just wanted to let you know that it, it won't exactly be the same. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not, and it will vary. But anything that prevents you from have to consistently prick your fingers, my poor fingers, um, it helps. And for the most part, it's only, it's not really off by too much. So you have to, or I have to do, um, calibrations ever so often calibrate the, um, the reading from the interstitial with that reading from my actual blood sugar to increase the accuracy of the CGM device. So hope I didn't confuse you too much, but this part will be much simpler. I'm actually going to show you how I, I do the connection. So the whole purpose of the video. So I left the, um, I left the infusion one I had in because I wanted to show you guys the removal and how you remove it. You just peel it and it comes right off just like that. The next step that I would do is to remove the infusion set from the pump and how you do that, you just twist and it comes out. I still have a little bit of insulin left in there, but I'm already at the four day mark. It needs to be removed every three days, but I'm not always, <laughs> I don't always do it every th three days, but it should be done every three days to be honest. I don't like to think I'm throwing away insulin. It just tears me up to do it because it's expensive. But I still have a little bit more, but I'm at the four day mark now, but so I'm just gonna go ahead and change it. The insulin pump tells you exactly what to do. So I've already removed, the instructions are on here. It tells you what to do. And the next thing I have to do now is to rewind the piston. The piston acts like a syringe. Remember I was showing you that in there? That's the piston. And now I'm actually going to hit rewind. And it shows you that the piston is being reround. So it goes back to the original position so that when you insert the new reservoir, it's at the beginning and it will able to, to wind and push out insulin through the cannula to, um, through the tubing rather, to get to your body. And it's gonna keep going until it doesn't take too long and then it's gonna stop. And that's it, rewind complete. The next thing I would do is to fill the reservoir with insulin and then connect it to my body. Okay, so I have my insulin and I use Fiasp. And this is the reservoir. So I typically, typically draw up about a little over one unit to last me for the three days. So I draw up a little bit over one, and then you take the plunger, the needle is right there, and then you just push it through the top. 
So you push in the same amount that you want to have in the reservoir, of course. Push in and then you pull out. So I typically do a little bit over, over one unit. And then you have to do your flicks to make sure, you see, have to do your flicks to make sure that you get rid of those air bubbles because that is what you don't want to have. You don't want to have air bubbles inside because that means that when you're administering the insulin, instead of getting actual insulin, you won't be getting insulin. So I'm just flicking it with my finger until I can see that there are no actual air bubbles. And to do that, sometimes I'll push up and pull down until I'm sure I don't have any bubbles. And then I'll pull off. I turn it around. Then I just twist it off. It's off. <clears throat> there is a little thing on the hair. You just wind that out. And then this is what the reservoir looks like. And this is what will go inside my pump. So the next step is to connect the infusion. This is the end I was telling you about that goes, actually goes inside the reservoir. So I'll come a little closer. You just take that. And it's usually supposed to be done on a surface, but because I'm trying to show you guys, push it down, you turn the top, and that's it. It's now connected. And remember I was telling you the pump actually tells you everything to do. So let's see what the pump says. The pump is now saying I should fill reserv my reservoir, which I just did, Connect tube into the reservoir, which I just did. And then it says place reservoir into pump, which is what I'm going to do now. So I'll place the reservoir in, I'll turn it to lock, and then you'll see it will say next. I'll hit next and next, I just hit that middle button there, next. And then it will tell you to hold load, press load, and I'll do that. And I can't remove my finger until it's finished loading. So it's loading and basically what it's doing, it's winding down because remember the piston was wound to the beginning. So the, um, the, the reservoir is actually going all the way down. And I'll show you what that looks like on the pump. So that means that it's done. The arrow comes up, it's done. Hit next. And then you have to, because this is a tube, you have to make sure that the insulin is able to run through the tube. So you'll do a little bit. They'll ask you to fill. So I haven't removed there is a, a plastic that comes on there over the needle. This thing that juts out is a needle. And that blue thing there, that's a lining over the needle. And I keep that on while I'm checking the lining. So what I'm going to do is hold fill. And then I'll watch this until I, I see a drop of insulin, which tells me that the tubing is free and the insulin is able to run through. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm just gonna keep my finger on the button so it fills with insulin, and then I'm just gonna watch there until I see that one drop. See? So that one drop means that there's nothing in this line that's going to prevent insulin from getting to my body. So, I'll go over to next, and now it's gonna tell me that I should insert the infusion set in my body. How do I do that? That's the part that you're gonna see now. So I remove 
just shake off the excess insulin. And this is called the Mio. So the Mio is the cannula and everything in one. So I remove this, then I remove this. This covers the adhesive that sticks to your body. And I'm just gonna drop that, and I'll pick it up afterwards. And it's pretty cool because it has um, ridges around the edge that you can actually put the tubing in. So I'm just gonna stick it there. I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna free the other side. And then it has parts here that you can hold. So the part that has the ridges, I'm going to hold that part so I can pull this through. So the part that has the ridges, you hold it and pull it through. And then the, the side that's without the ridges, that's what you should hold to push it into your skin. So I just make sure that this is in one of the grooves. Don't know if you can see the grooves, but yeah. You see that groove? I make sure that the tubing, I make sure that the tubing is stuck into that groove. And that's it. I already cleaned my site with alcohol and I'm just going to tug, put my insulin pump onto the waist of my pan. So I'm going to get on my tippy toes. So I typically, I usually wear my, my um, infusion at the side of my hip. It works for me there. And um, when I was going through the training, my educator was like, save your stomach for when you get old. Try other places, save your stomach until when you get older. So that's what I did. And it, it works for me and I rotate it. You have to be careful of scar tissue, of course. So I rotate it from side to side every, every time I change, which is every three days. So I'm just going to put it here and I already wiped. And I'm going to hold here, you push it here, and I release, and then it's in just like that, pull it off, and that's what it looks like. So that's the adhesive, and that's there. Let me just drop that. And how do I remove it? It's pretty easy to remove, so like if you want a shower or anything, you just... um squeeze the sides and it's off and then you would leave that so when i take a shower i leave that on and take a shower and to connect it you just push it back in and it's on and that's it so that's how you do the the infusion having inserted the cannula I still have one more step to go. I have to actually fill the cannula with insulin so it doesn't stay empty. Fill it with insulin, so I hit fill. Fill now, and then it's actually going to fill with insulin. And you'll see that blue line going down. And that's the beep signifying that it's done. And it says programmed basal delivery resumed. And that's it for the CGM. The CGM, um, they say you can wear it in your abdomen. You can wear it in the back of your arms. But I don't wear it either place. I'm not comfortable with it in my arms. And um, I don't want anything in my stomach. So I actually wear it on the front of my thighs and... It works pretty well for me. So I'll show you what that looks like too. So now I'm going to show you the sensor. So this is the actual sensor for the CGM. This covers a needle. And then to do this, I use this, which is called a serta. 
I'll have to put it on a flat surface. I didn't choose the best spot to do my video today. So it has to go in here and you push it down. Of course, I can't do it in my hand, so I'm just going to insert it and then come right back. I inserted it in the sorta. This is what it looks like. This is the sorta. And then to take it off, this has to be on a flat surface. So this would be on a flat surface. Your fingers would be here and you just pull it off. Once off, this is what it looks like. This, the manual actually tells you to, to leave this in here, but I find that it's easier for me to remove it now instead of after I've, I've, I've inserted it into my skin. So I'm just going to remove the covering and then that's what it is. You'll put this to your skin so say I was gonna do it in my arm, you would put it like so, the green arrows at the side, you would squeeze that, and then it goes into your skin just like that. This is it. Put it there, you press the green, you press the green, that's the placement for your finger. goes in place your fingers at the side the top you remove the needle out transmitter you insert the transmitter once the transmitter is inserted it should start blinking i hope you can see the green light blinking i don't know if you can but it should show you the. it should be blinking and then that's the signal that's sent to my pump and then it should send a signal to my pump to tell me that I just connected my insulin pump. So it says, hear that beep? It says, sensor connected, start new sensor. I'll hit start new sensor. And then it will tell me that it will take about two hours or so to warm up. And then once, once it, it warms up, it will then tell me that I need to enter a blood sugar. I'll enter my blood sugar and calibrate the system. Remember I said the interstitial fluid is where I get the reading for the CGM. So I'll use my blood sugar reading to put in there and then it will be calibrated according to that. And then it takes it from there. So that's how i connect the infusion set and this i think the video i'll probably have to redo this video i don't think i did it too properly i didn't plan out my location and all of that stuff i couldn't use my kitchen because my kitchen was being used so i had to use hair but hopefully you were able to get the idea of how to connect the different the infusion set insulin and the cgm so i'd like to hear from you so let me know what you got from this video let me if you're using something else other than what i use let me know that as well and i hope you learned something from this video if you haven't already subscribed to my channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button turn the notification bell on so that as soon as i upload a video you will be the first to know. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you for the next one. Bye. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger.